Uh, I want to get to this checklist that you've assembled. Uh, you call it the Safe Six, which is essentially various steps that uh, tenants need or any employer needs to bring people back. And I'm assuming you've em employed this in some areas around the world where they're a little ahead of us. We have. So as I mentioned to Sarah a couple of days ago, we have the benefit of having moved almost a million people back into offices in China the last six weeks. It, it was an over 800 million square feet of commercial product that we manage. From that experience, we put together a very extensive technical manual, almost 300 pages, that lets companies, both tenants and owners, look through every single step that's required to put people back to work. Uh, this safe six uh, graphic that we use around the company is really just a very simple visual that talks about the primary pillars of, uh, of putting folks back to work. And to give you a sense, Carl, for the appetite out in the market right now to try and figure out how we put people back into offices safely, we hosted a webcast yesterday to roll out this, uh, this manual. We expected a few hundred participants. We had 12,000 people dial in from 8,000 different companies for an hour to learn how to actually implement this manual across their, uh, across their footprint. Wow. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, a lot of it is about communicating to workers, uh, preparing the building, but your eye kind of zeroes in on this social distancing plan where you're talking about alternating work weeks. Um, you're using previously shared spaces now, single occupancy. How much of the percent, how, what percentage of the prior workforce do you really expect employers to bring back at any particular time? So it's a really good question. And I think there's a lot of dialogue in the marketplace uh, today and over the last few days about how much of a, uh, of a workforce will actually be back in the office next month or the month after. And I think the reason for that dialogue is all of us have now experienced what it's like to work remotely. And frankly, I think for many of us, myself included, the technologies we've invested in the last 10 years worked so well, particularly the cloud-based systems like Workday and Salesforce, they worked so well remotely that I think everyone is now reconsidering the office and, and, and the remote work location as viable alternatives for your workforce. Now, that having been said, there's been a lot of study done the last week, two weeks, talking to a lot of CEOs and CFOs about this issue. There was a survey done with 317 CFOs uh, this week asking them that very question. And the, I would say the consensus answer is across the board that most of them feel that perhaps 5% of the workforce they currently have in the office footprint could work remotely. So 5% is material. It's not huge, but it is material. And I think it's indicative of a change in thinking about how we're going to manage and, and help our employees have a better work experience, uh, be more effective and more efficient. I'm wondering what kind of pain you're expecting with so many of your tenants, hotels, restaurants, retail, not getting any business right now. What kind of defaults are you bracing for? You know, it is, uh, it's, it's the right question, Sarah. And I, as we look across the tenants that we work with and the owners that we work with, you can certainly see that across the, uh, across the spectrum of the verticals in commercial real estate, the pain is very different. So retail, there's just a world of hurt right now in the retail space. And I think it's it's an unknown how many of the smaller retailers are actually going to survive this downtime. For many of them, they were they were living on one month's cash flow and, and receivables and whether or not they can even come back in a month or two months is an open question. Office space, about 90, 95 percent of office rents were collected last month. That's a very good sign. Industrial space, boy, we all wish we owned a little bit of that right now because industrial logistics is, is the hot vertical right now in commercial real estate for all the obvious reasons. But there's no doubt, Sarah, there's going to be a lot of pain spread around the, uh, the commercial real estate universe over the next few months. What kind of concessions, Brett, have you been making to some of your tenants, if at all? Are you giving them relief on rent for what kind of time period? Right. So what we're seeing in the marketplace right now is that many landlords are having a proactive conversation with their tenants around the lease terms that are in place. Remember, most tenants have leases that run five, seven, ten years. So they, they have a real liability on their books as it pertains to the lease. And many, many landlords have been reaching out to their tenants and say, listen, 
before you get in real trouble, before you don't write your rent check, let's have a conversation around what we can do to help you help us. And I would say most of those conversations are around a couple areas. One is what we call blend and extend. So if a tenant will extend their lease, that lease payment, that, that rent rate can be reduced a bit. Other landlords are offering pure rent uh, abatement for one, two, or three months. Many are offering rent deferrals. It's not much different than what you're seeing in the multifamily uh, residential space, just over a much, uh, a much larger group of tenants. Finally, when it comes to, um, I know there was a great piece in uh, Fast Company about a sort of retail design, uh, whether it's groceries or department stores. I mean, at, at this point, the thinking is they're going to be allowing fewer people at capacity uh, at any given moment. I, I just wonder um, what that I mean. Are, are we going to have to get used to the idea of waiting in line to get inside a commercial space for, uh, for the foreseen future? I think it's very possible that you will have to wait in line to access, particularly high rises. If you think about it, Carl, when you're when you're think of a midtown high rise building that perhaps you work in today or before the pandemic, we arrived at our building, we showed our our security pass, we got in the elevator and went to the office. Okay. That's not going to happen going forward. Today, going forward, what's going to happen is it will probably be health checks of some sort in front of the building. How you actually get in queue for an elevator. Um, how you board the elevator, we're not going to be able to get as many people up uh, as quickly as we did in the past. So I think you're going to see lines not just at retail centers, but office buildings, uh, restaurants, because there's only so many people now that we can put into a confined space. You're going to see the same thing, by the way, in office floor plates, where we used to look at density as a real plus uh, as an employer on the office space. Now it's the opposite, where we're going to have to really open up these offices and uh, provide our employees a safe six feet in every direction from their workstation and wherever they walk in the office.